Thanks, guys. And I'd like to thank Game On Expo and Amina and John and everyone for, for having all of us. And it's, it's um, oops, excuse me. And it's been, it's been awesome. So I hope you guys are having a good, are you having a good time so far this weekend? Yeah? All right. Well, I guess, uh, I guess we'll kick off in a bit. Yeah. We'll give it a little bit more time. We can, um, yeah, people are still coming in. But you know what? Why don't you, why don't you start? Okay. You can start, yeah. You can give it a start. Okay, well, um, so hello, everybody. And how's everyone doing today? Are you, like, uh, finding everything you're looking for in the dealer's room? I made like I'm barely made a circuit because you know, but I'm looking for something for my niece and nephew. But uh, yeah, this is my first time in Phoenix, and sorry about the heat. No, <laughs> well, they said that there's like this is monsoon season, so but it, they said that it's barely raining. So normally you guys get a whole deluge, right? Yeah. And oh, jeez. So this is what we get. Uh, monsoon is a tease. <laughs> this time around, I mean, it's literally like it's gonna rain, but it's hot, and then it drizzles, and then it's done. But usually, our monsoons are more, more spectacular. Um, like it's like a heblu sometimes. That's what we call them, right? With all like the dust. So we haven't had that yet, I don't think. So we're kind of waiting. Maybe you'll get to see it before Maybe. the show's over. But Maybe. I, yeah. mean, I, I mean, I grew up in Texas. We had dust storms, but I don't know. I don't think. I think it's as intense as what you got here. We get we get pretty intense ones. A little bit of a vortex situation. Now we first moved to Texas when I was when I was little. I was really super little, and the first month we had a very severe tornado, and we were out driving, and uh, they announced it on the radio, and they said it's coming from. And my dad looked around. And he's like, Oh my God, it's right behind us. So we had to pull over take refuge, because I saw a movie, an instructional movie in school, oh, if you're out, you have to take refuge, you have to lie flat on the ground, and preferably in a drainage ditch. So we did that. So that was my first Texas tornado. <laughs> it was very dramatic. And uh, yeah, so it was, there's the weather in this area of the country is just kind of funky. And then, you know, New York City blizzards and everything, so. Uh, but no, it's very, it's very lovely to be here. And, you know, um, and it's been, and I am starting to do conventions a little bit more, like my colleagues. So bear with me, because uh, this is like, I don't, I, don't do, I don't do a whole lot of panels, but I'm looking forward to your questions, your burning questions. And I hope, yeah, I hope you have fun. So this is how we're going to do it. Um, there are a few options. If you want to get up to the microphone, to ask your questions, feel free, just start a line. Or you can ask them in your seat, whichever is more comfortable for you. Um, and then I'll just moderate, but really the floor is yours. So you're gonna be, you're gonna be basically directing this Q&A session. Um, so have fun with that and don't be shy. And I think that mic might have more of an echo that you have, Rachel. Um, so I might, I'm gonna give this one to you. Okay. I'm gonna use this one. Okay. That one might be a little bit better. Okay. Oh. Right? Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, you want to switch? You want to yeah. switch seats? Okay. Yeah, I noticed that mic is a lot better. So yeah, you're gonna be doing most of the time. Okay, awesome. Thank you. All right, guys. All right. So first question. Don't be shy. By show okay. of hands, and then we'll. Well, I'll, I could do a little intro or something like uh, I could tell you a little bit about what I've done. Do you do you like that? Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. So my name is Rachel Lillis. I'm uh, from New York. I live in Los Angeles now. And uh, slight woo, LA or New York. I don't know. But <laughs> um, bit of a contrast. Um, yeah. I was just like um, I. Most of you probably know me from Pokemon. I did the voices of Jesse and Misty, Jigglypuff, Chansey, Blissey, a whole bunch of different Pokemon. Lot, lots of pink ones. Um, and uh, speaking of pink, there's Revolutionary Girl Utena. Um, I was in anime like Slayer's Next, Irresponsible Captain Tyler, <laughs> um, and yeah, and some video games, Valkyrie Profile. 
uh, very, the, the Smash Brothers series. And uh, recently, my, my Jigglypuff voice made a cameo in, De in Detective Pikachu, which I haven't seen. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, from what, from, yeah, it was, it was supposed to be there. And yeah, so, yeah, I lived in New York for a long time, and then I recently moved to LA, and I'm acclimating to the lack of blizzards. And so, yeah. And so it's very nice to see you all here. Yeah. Okay, so, prepare for questions. Yeah. It's going to be double. <laughs> oh, so, I like that. It's a two-parter. Uh, first question. Playing, you know, Jesse and Misty, did you feel, when you went in to do, you know, to do your voice, to do your lines, did you have to put yourself in a different mindset the entire time, or was it just like, sort of, you know, like two parts of the same coin, like opposite ends, like yin and yang? Oh, that's an interesting question. Yeah, I think Misty and Jesse had a lot of similarities, and they had opposing parts. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, you, when you voice act, you use your body and as much as your voice. So, Misty involved different placement, just different posture, um, and Jesse was very, very different from that as well. Um, you know, it takes time to develop your character, but um, over time, yeah, the, the body became as much a part of it as anything else. And Jesse became like a warm up because I would do her voice first, we'd go back to the beginning of the script and start over, and then I'd do Misty, and I'd feel more warmed up for Misty because her voice was a high, like a higher placement. So, yeah, um, you, learn, you learn about a lot of things when you like take voiceover classes and go to acting classes and things like that, but when you're working on the job, you learn a lot about how, to, how you best work. Yeah. Next question. Um, yes. I know you guys talked about yesterday about uh, some of the characters got more lines in the movies as opposed to the show. Uh, was it a big step up, a big difference for you? Doing the Pokemon movies as opposed to the Pokemon show yeah. uh, in terms of how the characters were treated. Um, yeah, the, the, like, Team Rocket, I felt like went through five episodes of growth in one movie. They went from being, you know, reciting the motto and going after the twerps to, you know, collab collaborating with them and, and, and having to save the day. And I think at one point, didn't they sacrifice themselves? Like they kind of, yeah. So they're like, oh my God, we just did a good thing. Is that good? No, that's bad. <laughs> so uh, that was a very different thing. I felt like there was just like a, um, a more organic kind of feel to the movie sometimes. Um, so I do think that because the movies often could explore darker things, I think that Team Rocket got a little bit more airtime because of that. So it's interesting. And I just want to say, uh, always love Team Rocket. Even to this day, uh, people ask me a question, and I'll say, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Sorry, big, big nerd. Well, that's, well, that's very lovely, Mia. <laughs> Thank you for the questions. Good questions. Anyone? Else? Yes. So, in playing uh, two major roles in the uh, Pokemon series, uh, did that really put a strain on your uh, voice at all? Uh, where you had to conserve yourself? Uh, the question is, uh, did playing Jesse and Misty put a strain on my voice, um, and did I have to do anything to um, help help the voice uh, adjust? Um, it could it could get uh, pretty intense sometimes. I think for for those of you who have seen this, uh, do you know the episode, uh, the Battle of the Saint Anne, the the cruise ship? That was the very first episode that we recorded. I don't know why we started with episode 15, but for some reason we did. And I think maybe it was because it was a two-parter and it ended on a cliffhanger or something, or, a, or an ocean hanger. <laughs> but uh, the, and they thought, okay, we want people to come back to see the next episode. I think that's why they did that. And then we went back to episode one and we started from that. Um, so, yeah, the, doing, 
both of those voices, that episode was intense. So I learned a lot about not blowing out my voice and not screaming. And Jesse did a lot of screaming. As you all know, anime can animate their heads huge right off their body and make the mouths really big. And in the first season, we had a lot of that, with the teeth getting sharper and everything. And I thought, how loud is that? And the director's like, just make it as loud as you can. And there were a few times when I said, I don't think I can do that again. You know, I'm blowing. So I, I was starting to get a little bit worried. And so what I did to help things along was take singing classes and speech classes and voice classes. And um, I took, well, you know, New York City is very walkable, so I took a lot of long walks just to get some chill out exercise, just to feel a little bit better. Just little things like that to help the voice health. Um, and actually, you just reminded me of, I've told this story before, um, when we first started working on Pokemon, uh, they said, well, you're doing the voices of Musashi, Musashi and Kasumi. And I didn't know what their English names were yet. So the first day is when I learned their English names. I said, oh, Jesse and Misty, okay. And so we did tons of work on the St. Anne episode. We went back and re-recorded it and re-recorded it. And there was so much work. And I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I have a voice left because there's so much intensity. And then, um, and then I kind of started to get used to it. People who work in a lot of video games will say that. You kind of get used to a certain intensity. And then I would wake up in the morning and go, oh, okay, it's still there. <laughs> and so um, after we finished, I thought I was done. I didn't realize that Jesse and Misty were recurring characters. Nobody told me that. Um, I thought that they were just in that episode, that two-parter. And then Ash and Pikachu, maybe Brock, I don't know, would go off to the next town and meet new people, a new female male companion maybe, or new villains. That's what I thought Pokemon was. I had no clue that they were recurring. So after all that work and after like, oh my gosh, okay, gotta get used to this. And then the, I thought the job was done after a couple of weeks. And I thanked the director and I said, thank you for the job. I really enjoyed working with you. I learned a lot. If you ever need voice actors again, please give me a call. And I'd be happy to, I'd be more than happy to come back, be honored, you know. And he was looking at me as I was talking to him like, um, what are you talking about? And I said, well, I'm, we're done, right? And he said, no. And, uh, and, he, and I said, oh, did they come back in another episode? And he said, yeah. <laughs> and I said, oh, well, how many episodes are they gonna be in? And he said, all of them. <laughs> And then I started to get a little nervous. <laughs> and I said, how many episodes are in a season? <laughs> and he said, 52. <laughs> and I kind of had a Dustin Hoffman Tootsie moment. And I went, <laughs> I honestly didn't know if I could handle it. Um, I was like, Bleh. and you know, for those of you who have seen Tootsie, his character, he dresses up like a woman to be in a soap opera. They pick up his option for another year. So he has to dress like a woman for another year. And he's like, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Anyway, so that's how I found out that Jesse and Misty were recurring. So yeah, that all played into your question. That's a long answer, but that's like, that all played into the process of growing all of that mush together <laughs> into that one experience. So yeah, I don't know how that information slipped through the cracks. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a major, uh, major piece of information gone missing. Yeah, I had no idea, and I thought, and I thought, I don't know if I can handle it. But I just didn't say anything. I kept going back, said, "Please let me handle it." So <laughs> I need a job. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for the question. Do your best, yeah. Yeah, and um, I was wondering, like, were there any? Uh, well, I guess in summary, I'm asking, like, how much of a when it came to like performing the like the to be a master CD and all that, like, what was the difference between like that and the show? And were there any of those like uh, your best moments in that? Um, you know, there weren't a lot of opportunities for improv, uh, so recording the to be a master CD, everything was very tightly scripted. 
because, you know, they had, you know, to protect the world from devastation. And, and I recorded it separately from Eric, so it was very tightly done. Team Rocket kind of had that motto thing, so that was a little unique to that. So there wasn't a lot of improv. Um, but yeah, I don't really know. I think when we recorded the Christmas album, we had a little bit more room for improvisation. For those of you who might be familiar with the Christmas album, that was recorded just on our free time, just because we felt like it. And, <laughs> and so that, that was a different experience in terms of doing your best. It's like, um, how are we gonna do this? I mean, how are we gonna translate Pokemon into a Christmas carol? We, we don't quite know. So yeah, there, there were things like that. In the show, yeah, there were a lot of do your best moments because Japanese is so different from English and sometimes you just can't adapt it and sometimes you just sort of have to think on your feet. So yeah, there were times like that. But recording the album, no, that was pretty strictly done. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so we'll go here and then we'll go to you. Um, you said you've taken uh, classes for voice acting and stuff like that. What actually got you into voice acting? What made you want to do it or did you fall into it? Um, I was always doing voices when I ever since um, I have a whole I have a lot of siblings and they tell me stuff that I don't remember. Like when I was little, I did a lot of voices. Um, uh, they. I watched a lot of cartoons and I watched a lot of movies and I really liked to do voices and accents and I just imitated everything that I saw. And I think, I mean, my sister tells me that when like the Wizard of Oz would come on TV and the Lullaby League would show up, I did the like, I guess what you would call the Jigglypuff voice at that time. It's like, and I did that like when I was like four years old. And, um, yeah, and I would just imitate everybody. And you would have, I don't know, Claudia Cardinale in a spaghetti western saying, you know, talking like this, you know. Um, and I would just, like, imitate everybody and just do English accents and sort of things. And everyone thought I was just nuts. And I was like, why is she doing that? Well, my, mom's, my mom's, like, you know, a mother of six children, and so she's like, oh, she keeps her busy. Um, so... <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, I don't know, I think my sister said one day, I asked how cartoons are made, and she said, well, you got people who draw the pictures and people who do the voices, and as soon as I heard that that was a job that existed, I said, I want to do that. And, like, they're like, oh, you'll, no, that's just for Mel Blanc, that he's the only person who does that. <laughs> and, uh, but as I grew up, I just never, I never shook that. Um, and then, I, but I was too shy to take, to do the plays. I grew up in Texas, so the cheerleaders and football players did all the musicals anyway. So there was never any room for the, you know, geek. But, uh, <laughs> but it's, uh, but I, I started taking acting classes and started getting into it that way. And, um, and then I uh, took singing classes and started doing extra work in opera because I could blend into an opera chorus. And because you can get like 70 bucks per performance or something, so I said, like, oh, I'll do that on the side. So there was like little things that you would do um, just to learn. But I didn't like uh, do it all like a, as a degree program. It was just like piecemeal. Yeah. So. Thank you. Yeah, sorry. So we have you. And then there was one other. Did you raise your hand too and I missed you? Okay, perfect. So go ahead. So, I have two questions. Okay. Um, speaking of the album, there was one song that I listened to with the Veronica and Jake's too. Mm -hmm. Did you guys record that together? We did. That was one of the very few things. It's interesting you asked that. That was one of the very few things that we recorded together. Yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I think, it was for, I think it was for a video game where two people play. Does anyone know if that's... Accurate. I think it's like, you know that song, It Takes Two, Baby. That's what we did with Ash and Misty. But yeah, that was uh, recorded simultaneously. So it was a new experience. There was, a, there was a lot of singing. Like, those Kids WB promos were almost all singing. <laughs> it's like, oh my god. So, yeah, that, yeah. Yeah. 
I think we did that separately. Yeah. We just, we just did the, uh, the intro, but another singer sang the song. Um, gosh, favorite lines of Jesse and Misty. Um, well, does anybody here have any favorites? Like anything that they? Yeah. <laughs> the motto? Like prepare for travel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, and I liked when they changed up the motto too. That was a lot of fun. It's like an evil as old as the galaxy, and. Uh, yeah, we had a lot of fun with that, and there, there was there was singing in that too. So we're like, geez. See, in Japan, so many voice actors are recording artists, and so we're like, oh, geez, they're singing again. Um, so hey, we're down with that. It's crazy. It's fun. Um, yeah, I can't think of anything like Misty. Um, I like some of the battle stuff. She was in the World Cup, and she did pretty well in the World Cup, and so she did a lot of cool battling in that. So that was that was a lot of fun. I can't think of any. Individual lines offhand, though. Sorry. <laughs> Off the top of my head, um, for Jesse, there was a an episode with the Evie brothers. Do you guys remember that? And Misty, you were talking to yourself, right? Because it's Jesse and Misty fighting, and Misty called you an old hag. <laughs> and Jesse was like, "What?" And then like it like zoomed in to like the crinkles in her face, and then she like breathe fire, <laughs> and then Meowth, um, who was voiced by, uh, by Maddie yeah. um, Blaustein, he was like, oh my god, uh, Jesse literally evolved into a Flareon. <laughs> but so I, re I just remember that whole bit, because it's my favorite in the, in the whole series. Yeah, so and I... Was, but you actually like, did the, like, ah, you know, like the, the fire breathing sounds. The fire the, breathing yeah. sound. But that was fun. It's like, freak, I, and, I, and people, people like that exchange a lot. And they do the close-up, like the Rolling Stone close-up on her lips. Um, but yeah, they, uh... Yeah. Forget it, you old hag! We won't let you do that! What? What? What did you just call me? And I don't know if I can scream right now. <laughs> <laughs> I've been talking to the con a lot. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. I can, I can light some hairspray on fire. <laughs> make the effect, but not the noise. <laughs> that, that made my day. Thank you. No, no, no. <laughs> oh my god. I, I, I'm, I'm a little nervous. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm a little nervous. You don't, you don't show it. You don't show it. <laughs> oh, there be you go. This. Go ahead. Um... <laughs> Um, yes, I've done, I've worked on uh, various other anime, and there's some prelay shows. Um, I just finished working on Hunter by Hunter, uh, playing Coco, who provides the color commentary for all the battling. For those of you who aren't familiar with Hunter by Hunter, it's a series about fighting, battling, again, but um, they actually fight to the death. It's human beings fighting each other to the death, and, and uh, you would actually see some of it uh, as, as, as we were dubbing, and Coco loved every second of it. She's like, wow, he's gonna go for the move, and he's dead! And I'm like, wow, she sleeps at night somehow. So, um, yeah, so I was like, this is just a cartoon. But, uh, yeah, and then I played Aunt Nito in that show as well, and she's just a very nurturing, you know, come home soon. And uh, kind of motherly, and you know, uh, lots of other lots of other things that were recorded in New York City at the time. Utena Slayers, um, all all sorts of different shows, uh, like uh, His and Her Circumstances, um, just uh, Genshiken, which is one of my favorites. Um, Genshiken is kind of meta because it's about fandom. It's an anime about anime fandom. And it's a club of, of people who just kind of get together and talk about anime and manga and things like that. And uh, I played, you know, Oh no, who's was very shy and um, I, like, I like cosplay. <laughs> and she's just like, oh, speak up, honey. But, uh, <laughs> but she, but uh, that was, that's a lot of fun, getting to play. And they got, they had a really big variety, so I got, I'm, you know, I got to play a lot, a lot of different types of characters. Yeah. 
And yeah, so um, yeah, LA is kind of different from New York in that regard because they tend to be more uh, intense shows meant for Cartoon Network, but New York was a little bit more aesthetic. had mentioned, you know, that you did the, the voice acting classes, you know, piecemeal. Mm -hmm. um, how long was it before you decided you wanted to do voice acting that you got to the Pokemon? Well, um, I moved to New York City uh, in order to study acting. And when I was there, uh, like my the first summer that I was there, I was going to acting school and I got an acting trade newspaper, and there was an ad in there for anime voice actors, and I answered it. And I showed up at the audition and just wound up getting cast as like newscaster number eight and student number four, and um, and it just kept in touch with them over time. And then about a year and a half later, they auditioned for Pokemon. And Pokemon was just one of many auditions. I was auditioning for Shakespeare Regional Theater. Um, and, you know, go, go, and it's like, well, where's the Pokemon audition? Oh, well, it's at, it's at this dude's apartment, Lower East Side. So, you know, went to his apartment, and, you know, he had a home studio, and, you know, he had uh, the first episode of Pokemon, where Ash meets Pikachu, and he puts on the pink gloves, and he has the clothesline, and he's pulling Pikachu, and. Pikachu goes up into the tree and laughs at him and everything. That was the first segment of Pokemon that I saw, and immediately I fell in love with it. And I said, well, I'd watch this show. And I, this looks like a lot of fun. I love cartoon, I love animation. And I said, well, gee, I hope I get something on this, because this looks really adorable. And so that was kind of how the Pokemon audition went. And uh, there were tons and tons and tons of callbacks for, for it was weeks and weeks and weeks of auditioning for that. So. Um, I would say, like, in the span of like maybe a year and a half, and just taking acting acting classes and other classes and things like that, and adjusting to New York City. I moved like five times that summer, <laughs> sublet to sublet. <laughs> so, for those of you who've ever lived in New York, it's like, eh? but uh, yeah, that was um, a lot happening in a short period of time. So yeah. Yes. So. How different was it uh, voicing uh, Jigglypuff in the uh, anime versus the uh, Smash Brothers video game? Which one was more difficult? Mm. Well, in the show, the Jigglypuff did all kinds of things. You know, uh, it would sing and it would do regular reactions, but it would also fall down pits and roll down hills and uh, do battling and everything. Um, but it didn't do as much battling as it did in the games and the games were mostly battle moves. And not to picture, as opposed to the anime. So I had no idea what Jigglypuff was doing. And I, again, not much of a gamer, and I haven't really seen the Smash Brothers thing at all, just some, just some of the videos that people have put up on YouTube. And there's a lot of Jigglypuff just basically floating around and <laughs> occasionally landing up. I don't know, it's like, how do you, how do you control that thing? So, yeah. And so, um, <laughs> so yeah, it's mostly just battle stuff. It's like, <laughs> and uh, but in the in the anime, it's more I don't know legato if you want to use a musical term. Um, you know, so it's kind of yeah, they're two different animals. They did feel different to me. So yeah, yeah, it's a good question. Yeah. You know, um, I would say probably because you get used to doing things to picture for a while with the anime, the video games were trickier because I'm like, you're looking for a monitor to look at, to, to guide you. But um, yeah, it, it, when you don't have a picture to go by, you just sort of use your imagination. So I kind of imagine Jigglypuff punching uh, things or just basically launching its entire body at things, and, but bouncing right off as well. So I'm thinking, all right, are there repercussions? You know, does it, does it take any damage? How does it do that? So you really, and they would do like short reactions, like Jigglypuff, short reaction, medium, long. So all, all number of combinations. So it had nothing to do with linear storytelling at all. Just all what might happen in the game. Yeah, so the game, I don't know, 
know, it's just kind of like a versatile that way. You just <laughs> can't have fun with it no matter what. But yeah. Yeah, thanks for the question. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us the story behind that? Like, why they didn't use it for those three episodes? Um, I don't know technical, technologically why they didn't. I just knew that they couldn't at the time. Um, I was originally cast as Pikachu, and I did a few episodes, and part of that whole, you know, Jesse and Misty are recurring characters, really? Um, I just thought that then, from then on, I'd just be doing Pikachu. But then I showed up for work one day and they said, yeah, we're going to go with the Japanese. We're not going to use your voice anymore for that. And so, and I think, and I think that was a good choice. I actually, I really like Ikoe Itani's take on the character. Um, somehow they, they worked it out, technically. I don't know why they couldn't at first. Um, but, yeah. So I was originally Pikachu and then... We recorded a few things, and then they said, you know, we're going to see if we can work it out. We can use the Japanese original. So, yeah, I think I think at that time, we were just figuring it, everything out as we went, because we had no idea of, like, how to handle some things. Um, it was a lot of work. And so, you know, I was sorry to see Pikachu go, though, because I'm like, oh, I love Pikachu. <laughs> They're so cute. But I kind of agreed with them. I said, you know, I think that's a better... If you can make it work, I think it's a better fit. So... Yeah, so I really don't know why they couldn't, though. Uh, Pro Tools didn't do it, I guess, I guess. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> All right, so I promise you, and then we'll go back. Was it hard to go back and forth between, I guess, different Pokemon, like Jupiter and Pussy and Jesse, Pussy and Chansey, versus, like, going back to human characters? Like, was it hard to kind of jump Well, like, this is kind of going back to Pro Tools. Um, Pro Tools is just like, it has a lot of different levels. And so, so many times you just do one track at a time. So you would just start with, you know, Jesse, and go through the whole script, and then go back, do Misty, and then go back and do it in various Pokemon. Um, so yeah, Jigglypuff would be one track on its own, and we'd go through the whole thing and just look for Jigglypuff cues and do that. So it would, it would just, there wasn't a lot of, there weren't many occasions where I would say, prepare for travel. I'm a water Pokemon master. And then, you know, the, there wasn't a lot of that going on. There was mostly just uh, getting used to one, switching and then switching, which is a lot easier for everybody. Yeah. Um, I've gotten familiar with Pro Tools since then, and it's like, okay, that's why we did it. So, yeah. It's not, it's not easy, like, um, to, uh, it, it, it really is not easy to switch from, you know, placement to placement. And it's, it's not a, it's not a really great idea. Um, I learned that in, and it's, this is going to sound weird, but, um, in singing classes, like, uh, there's, you know, for example, like Mozart, he would compose arias just for singers to show off their voices. And there's one aria, I think it's called Spiagarvi Adio, and it's called an insert aria, and it's in somebody else's opera. And the reason they did insert arias was so that opera singers could show off their ranges if they weren't satisfied. It's like, well, I want to show off more. I want to show them that I can literally go from, um, what was it, like a B3 to a D6, a 17 note jump. And that happens in this aria. Mozart did stuff like that for singers because singers wanted to stand out. They, and that's incredibly unhealthy and for the voice. And you probably all know the, the Queen of the Night aria from the Magic Flute, and that goes up to an F6. People just did that just so that they could say, look what I can do. But it's just like, darn, I mean, the human voice just... <laughs> if you can do that naturally, great, but you gotta be careful. So, you know, um, so we would always... So all the voice actors involved in Pokemon were all very conscious of that. They're like, you know, I'm gonna do James first and then Brock. I mean, we're gonna work on Ash. 
we're going to get the placement right. And then when Veronica is like, okay, let's let's take a break. You know, that we were all very conscious of that. And that was as, just as much of a learning curve as, as anything else. So I learned a lot doing those characters. It's like, it was like a class in of itself. I had no clue what I was doing. But yeah, um, so I learned a lot during those early times. Yeah. So I didn't forget about you. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so like, how was it to like just experience like Pokemania, like just being around, like was it like a point where it was like overwhelming or was it just like, haha, we're better than Power Rangers? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really, I don't know. I didn't really feel it. I, I didn't feel it really. Um, I guess maybe because we were just recording it in this small room and that was kind of a bubble. Um, you know, I called it the Manhattan Project, <laughs> you know, it's like, oh my god, so many, but it's like, you know, we were just kind of isolated and I didn't really, I mean, I got little bits and pieces of notifications that people were actually watching the show, um, but when it, when it started to do incredibly well, I was like, well, how well could it do? I mean, it's like at 6.30 in the morning, so, but I started to get letters from parents um, saying, um, my daughter, my son, I could never get him out of bed in the morning to go to school. So now we're like, okay, you, if you get out of bed and finish your homework, get dressed and eat your breakfast, you can watch Pokemon. But, you know, Pokemon gets them out of bed. I'm like, How? okay. And then, you know, for some reason it had that effect. And one woman came up to me at a convention. She said, what does this Pokemon do? It just came out of nowhere. And now my kids are obsessed. And I, I said, I don't really, I didn't really understand the obsessive aspect of it. I just knew that I thought it was kind of a cute, cool show. It was kind of novel. In It's like a battling anime kind of thing. But it's also about these kids who want to help everybody and do good deeds for people so yeah I didn't for me it was just like from the inside and I didn't really feel I didn't really feel the Pokemania I, like I'd say maybe I saw like a huge poster of Pikachu in Times Square and that's when I really started to think maybe this is having an influence on people so really but when you're inside and you're just kind of like you know, you're reciting the Team Rocket motto, and you're thinking, wait a minute, do I need milk? <laughs> you know, so, it's like, wait a minute, you know, you're not really thinking about too much. You kind of get used to it. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what's interesting? I think Tara actually shared this on her Twitter, and we follow each other, and I thought it was interesting. She said something, I think she shared an article about, you can just, like, look it up. People who've watched Pokemon, uh, Pokemon, uh, have, like, a... They're, they're like, it's, I think it's like a CT scan or MRI that shows that their brain is different than someone who has not watched Pokemon. So like there is a spot, like there's a place in our brain that oh, is just, that right? Yeah. That's just Pokemon. There's a Pokemon spot in your brain, literally. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so we all share that in common, which I think is pretty special. Wow. <laughs> Like when you learn a new language kind of thing and you get a new yeah, thing in your brain? and it's like a wiring, like it's Pokemon wiring. Like, like a pleasure receptor or like... <laughs> I don't know the details. <laughs> no. It says the brain scan reveals a Pokemon region in adults and trainers. Wow. Oh my lord. You can like the article. Just put... <laughs> yeah. Pokemon brain. Oh God, you know that that like oh man, is this like the Matrix or something? I know, I know, it's very trippy. It's terrifying. It's this is a good version of the Matrix if it is. <laughs> right. <laughs> We've got a question there, and I think you had a question too. So after him, we'll go to you. <laughs> That's clever. That's clever. Very good. Go ahead. I'd like to like to uh, talk about the Pokemon Center of the Brain. Um, when you were doing the voices, you know, of, you know, Missy, Jesse, or you know, the Pokemon, um, everybody talks to themselves. You know, when, you know, they're trying to you know work stuff out in their head. When you were doing that on your own, away from the recording studio, did you ever 
talk in the character's head, like, like in your head, your inner voice was, you know, Missy or Jesse. Um, <laughs> I, I, yeah, the Pokemon region of my brain. <laughs> I would engage. Um, the, the closest answer to your question is that I sometimes like do Jigglypuff when I'm washing dishes or something. And um, in the, the walls of my apartment building are kind of thin. So, you know, just washing dishes. You know, and, and just like, not necessarily Jigglypuff, but just that lullaby leak voice. And my neighbors are like, did I just hear like Jigglypuff or something? <laughs> and I, like I heard something from your apartment, it sounded like Jigglypuff. It, it, like we don't, like he, we don't know each other's names, we, he just moved in. And uh, I was like, oh, you know, nice to meet you. And it was like, like, yeah, I just had a question. I thought I heard something weird from your apartment. Like, were you watching Pokemon or something? Like, I thought I heard Jigglypuff from your apartment. And I said, oh, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you know, halo, innocent. Um, so, <laughs> that's funny, that's funny. Okay, so you and then you. So, for the Team Rocket model, did you actually have to record it every single time for every single episode? They didn't like recycle it? Really? Yes. <laughs> yeah, record it every single time. I mean, because I, mean, I know that there are variations of it from one episode to the next, but they never they never recycled the lines like they did with the Pokemon? Mm -mm. No, we did the, we did the motto fresh version every time. Yeah, freshly baked. Uh, yeah, and they changed the motto so many times. Um, they would have like um, different costumes and different backgrounds and takes and everything. Sometimes they'd sing it. Um, it's like they did a karaoke version of it, and there were. It's like what is what do those numbers mean on the karaoke machine? It's like you know, every, yeah. So there was always something different. So yeah, yeah, it was always a different motto. It just it was like the show just turned it into a running gag, <laughs> basically. Yeah, so fun. Go ahead. Um, so I was just curious how you picked the voices for a character or if the director does it for you. Like, how do you find the voice for a character? Um, uh, the voice, for, finding a voice for a character, um, you go in an audition and you, they give you a description, sometimes a picture. Uh, in the case of Pokemon, I didn't see any pictures. There was like a one-sentence description of Mus Musashi, for example. Um, it didn't really have a lot to go on with, with Pokemon, but with many other, many other shows, yeah, they might have artwork to show you. Usually they'll just say, well, you know, it's a young girl or an older female character and this very serious, very studious, or very wicked or evil or, um, you know, they'll just go into archetypes, and that'll tell you something about tonality, timber, um, attitude, um, you know, whether they want an accent. Um, sometimes the director will make a suggestion, like, you know, do you have an English accent, you have a Russian accent. But for most of the time, you can go for a certain tonality, an age range, or an attitude, depending. Um, so, you know, auditioning, that's why auditioning can be, that's why I have to do so many auditions, because they're just looking for the right people to fit. So, yeah, um, you just come up with the best that you can in the moment. I have a second question. Mm -hmm. um, I like doing accents and impressions of stuff like I always have as a kid, but do you have one that you, like, you were always the most proud of or something that you're, like, <laughs> the most proud of an accent or a voice that you do? Um, gosh. Well, um, I've worked with a I've worked with a lot of people who are from all over the world in certain jobs, and I wound up just like kind of imitating them because I was around them. This is something that you kind of do. Sometimes you get around people and you imitate how they talk, and you don't. And you're like, that's rude. You shouldn't do that. But sometimes it's like, you know, we had a woman named Marion from Manchester, England, come in, and um, for. Like, I, I've worked in research for science, and her speciality was pre-programmed pre cellular death. 
and she was very happy about it. <laughs> and um, so you let Abba test this. <laughs> I'm going to talk about my progress this week in Sailor Abatosis, which, I mean, can we have the first slide, please? All right. And so she was always, like, like so happy and so engaging, and we're like, oh, we love watching her talk, and it's like we're offending the heck out of her because we're, like, so American. We're like, oh, it's, it's so cool how you say that, you know? <laughs> say apoptosis again. <laughs> so, things, things like that. We had um, Elena from Spain. And uh, she was like, Rachel, did you see it? They changed the meeting again? I mean, oh, she used to swear. I'm not going to swear in front of you. Um, but whenever she said a swear word, she would say A in front of it. I'll, I'll say BS. Is that okay? I'll say BS. She would say, that is a BS. And I said, no, you didn't. She said, how is my English? Is it okay? And it's like, your English is fine, but you don't need to say a uh, in front of BS. Just say BS. And she's that doesn't sound right, right? No, a BS. Yeah, I've got to go about that. And so everybody just had their quirks and they're just really funny people that I've worked with in different jobs and I imitate them but not in front of them. I imitate my Aunt Margie. Oh my God, she hates that. Oh God, don't, don't do the edit account panel, Rachel, because, oh God, your mom will be so mad. <laughs> so, you know, Western New York. Anyway, so... Um, Western New York, woo! Niagara Falls, woo! <laughs> and, you know, some parts of Canada, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so, um, I don't know, I just, I just enjoy, I enjoy people, I enjoy their stories, and everything that makes them who they are, and, um, so I just, think that's just part of the learning about people and just kind of seeing, just testing out different fun things you can do, but hopefully not offending anyone. <laughs> so, that's a, that's a cool question, thank you. Yeah, uh, don't feel too bad about that, because with me, when I, I, I like, I mirror people automatically, and I think a lot of people are like that. So when there's a cool accent, I have to catch myself not to like suddenly speak in like a British accent because that would be so offensive. So don't feel too bad. Like I, I sometimes I actually do it like on the spot when I'm talking to someone. I'm like that is so rude. Yeah, um, yeah. My my grandmother was from Ireland and um, from uh, Cork, and she lived in the States for a sizable portion of her life. But she, when I was growing up, she would say, well, I'm, I'm going to the spa with Douglas and Myrtle and a bunch of people, and we're gonna, we're gonna maybe just have a weekend of it. And I'd be like, okay, going to the, and I, for years, for years, I thought she was saying this bar. We're going to this bar, like the, the, this bar. And I'm thinking, you're going there every other weekend. That's, you're not like the Malcolm back or something. And so she's like, and so she's like, yes, yes, we're going to the spa again. And I'm like, have, have fun. And she's like, you know, I'm looking, I'm really looking uh, forward to it because this weekend we're getting a special on a rub down. So I'm you're going to get a rub down and all that at, at this bar. And I'm like, what kind of bar is this? <laughs> so finally I asked her, so you're going to, the, so what is this bar you go to? And she said, no, 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 the spa. This bar, and she, she said, the, the, no, she said, no, 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 the spar, spar, like boxing, and she said, no, you get me article, no, S P A, the spa, and I was like, oh, not the whole rub down thing makes sense now, but, uh, <laughs> but you know when I you know, talk about her sometimes, it's, and uh, she used to fly to visit us uh, through DFW, Dallas Fort Worth Airport, and she said, and "Rest her soul." I don't mean to make fun of her, but it's like uh, everyone in my family imitates how she would say Dallas Fort Worth. She would say Dallas Fartworth, Fartworth. <laughs> so, so are you from Fartworth? I'm from Fartworth. <laughs> so. But yeah, you don't want to offend anybody, but it's hard not to pick up on it because there's just something kind of endearing about them. You feel like you're, I don't know, getting to know them or something in a way. But yeah, you can, I've got to watch them. Yeah. <laughs> got can't mirror people in front of them. That's a great story. <laughs> this Bye. far. <laughs> let's go, go to the spa, the shall spa. we? After the panel. Like After that. the panel, let's get, so let's get a rub down at the spa. You were probably so alarmed, too. You're like, my, like, 
she's going to the bar and getting a rub down. That's not that's not great. And she said they you know they they get, they use alcohol for the rub down. I said I should think so. They got plenty of it lying around. <laughs> that's funny. Oh my god, that's amazing. That's amazing. By the way, shout out to the Misty cosplay event over there. I see you. You look awesome. I see you. Yeah. <laughs> I see you. And then um, I think Ash Ketchum is in the back too. Yeah. That's yeah, awesome. There's so Andy many awesome Rockets. costumes. Yeah. No, wonderful. So shout out to all of you. Yeah, you guys look awesome. Fabulous. So we have time for a few more questions. Okay. Okay, so what we'll do, we'll go with you and then we'll go with you. And then if, did I miss someone back here? Okay, good, good. Just want to make sure. All right, perfect. On the topic of accents, are there any accents that you don't get to use as often as you would like in your voice acting? Oh, gosh. Um, well, um, not, not as often as voice acting, but in film acting. I've played a few Russian characters because um, uh, they tend to call me in if I ever do on camera, which is very rarely or theater, they usually call me in for the non-American character. And they say, can you do a Russian accent? And that's not the kind of thing that comes up very often in voice acting. But, um, you know, they, they said, you know, you look a certain ethnicity. And they don't, they can't ask you what your ethnicity is, but they said, can you play this accent? So stuff like that comes up. Um, and, uh, Jeez, yeah. and just yeah, because if you're not, I hate to say this, but casting is very, you know, it, it's very difficult if you don't look a certain way, and if you if they can't immediately peg your ethnicity as Caucasian, they tend to say you'll play the non-American character. So that accents have come up and on camera because of you know I don't look because I'm not. I don't, I don't look uh, American to them. So, um, yeah, that's come up. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Uh, for an audiobook, an Indian accent came up. And they are so particular about that. And, you know, it's like, well, no, 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 that's, that's off limits. You have to be very, you have to be specifically from India to do that. So, it, there is a lot of particular stuff that comes up. So, you don't get to do as many accents as you can because a lot of times they call in people from those countries because in voiceover you can you know do everything electronically so the on-camera stuff is where the challenge has been so that's an interesting question you haven't thought about that in a while <laughs> thank you for thank you for asking but um yeah i it's, it's an interesting perspective yeah you, you learn a great deal from that. all right and then you can go ahead uh, back on the topic of In the Hoenn Saga, uh, what was it like to come back as Misty in the Hoenn Saga? It was really, it was kind of emotional. Um, I missed her, and uh, she. There was like a whole. Um, there was a whole like interesting thing with Togepi and the other kingdom, and Team Rocket played a very significant role. So I thought that she just got right back in the saddle. It's like she she can't she can't breathe for five minutes, can she? <laughs> She shows up in the episode and boom, Team Rocket captures her. So it's like, oh, welcome back, Misty. <laughs> so I enjoyed that very much. I enjoyed it. I think that she had matured a lot. Um, she was counseling people. She was telling Max, you gotta, you gotta be, just be nicer to your older sister because she cares about you. I mean, Misty from Indigo was like, my, my older sisters are so mean to me, you know, so. But in Hoenn, she was like, oh, you gotta, just gotta listen, you gotta have faith in them. So, yeah, it was, it was cool. It was cool how they progressed that way. So, you speak about Misty so fondly, and I don't blame you, she's oh, one of my favorites. I love her. But I'm wondering, is there, um, if you could pick one character that you've played over the years that resonates with you specifically, which one would it be? Um, like uh, any character ever? Any character ever. Any character ever. Yeah. That you think resonates with you the most, that it just comes to mind most often. Well, I, I would have to pick Misty because... Oh, I'm getting emotional. 
Um, <laughs> um, sorry, I didn't mean to make you emotional. No, and you know, it's, uh, no, I, I cried the drop of a hat. Anybody, anyone who can relate? <laughs> yeah, no, I do. I do. Yeah. I cry when I see people cry, so I'm gonna look oh. away. I'm gonna look away when. Yeah, it's like it's like don't don't yeah. <laughs> gotta put up like a whole wall right here. Uh, I know it's 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 powerful. Um, Misty, right after I got over the shock of finding out that Misty was a recurring character, <laughs> it's like, what? Um, it was then revealed, um, and maybe you guys can help me out with this, uh, the episode where we first meet Misty's sisters. Does anyone know what that is? Yeah, it was, I think it's Sisters of Cerulean City. Sisters, thank you. Yeah. And, um, gotcha. thank you so much. Um, it's revealed that she's the youngest of four girls. And I was like, um, and I'm, I'm the youngest of six girls. And I know, Irish Catholic. Um, so, <laughs> Italian and all, the, all the, and all the other European nations that go into the DNA. Um, but yeah, there was, there was just like a lot of um, uh, familiarity. Because as soon as I found that out, and her sisters, and I don't mean to invoke any, like, I'm not fishing for any awes, but, my sisters kind of treated me in a very similar way when I was growing up. They were, they kind of teased me the same way that Misty sisters teased her. And I was just watching this episode with my jaw on the floor because it was just so freaking relatable. And the director said, okay, now, Misty's sisters, okay, we meet them in this episode. They're not very nice to her. Uh, what you want to do, you approach it from the, and I said, I got this. <laughs> I mean, you can go to lunch if you want so. <laughs> I don't need an interacting, right? Um, yeah, it was just so familiar. And the episode aired, and uh, I, I think I told you this. Yeah, okay, you did. Yeah, yesterday you did, yeah. Um, the episode aired, and I got a phone call from one of my sisters, and she said, how do they know about our family? <laughs> Did you tell the people in Japan about us? How do they know about us? She was serious. She wasn't kidding. She's I'm, I'm not joking. This is, this is an honest question, because I saw the episode, and she's like, how do they know about us? Did you tell them that we were mean to you? Because I don't know if I care for that. And I said, no, 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 I didn't say it. Japan is two years ahead of us. That episode came out two years ago, before any of the voice actors was even cast. So I just found out about that, and she's like, uh-huh. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't, blah, blah, blah. okay, fine. And then she, she would watch the episodes from time to time, and if she happened to catch one with Misty's sisters in it, she'd be like, you told them we were mean to you, didn't they? She was convinced it was about us. Um, and I said, you know, some things are just, you know, universal. I mean, sibling, siblings can do that to each other sometimes. So, um... I'm having, I'm doing all these long answers, but anyway, um, Misty's, I relate to Misty because of her family, very much so. And also because I, maybe, maybe this is just like, I don't know, maybe it's just bias, but I do like water Pokemon the best. I do like them a lot. If I were a gamer, I think I would probably start with Squirtle. That would be my starter, so. Uh, yeah, so that's that's a very lovely question. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Thank you for answering it. No, yeah, thank I you. loved it. I appreciate it. So I think we'll do one more, if that's okay with you. Just, and then we'll close out, so go ahead. Okay. It'll be our last question. Yeah, the question is, there a voice that you just hate doing? Voice hate doing? Um, if mm. you can say that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess, like, any voice that hurts the voice. Um, and that that can that can be different for every single person. For most people, can be like shouting and screaming, and that's that's not my favorite thing to do. Um, like for video games, I don't I don't particularly like that very much. Um, and that's that's some, that's something else you have to get used to. That takes practice to get used to. So you do get used to it, but it's not easy. It's like something you really kind of have to work at and practice. So that's tough. Um, and yeah, I would say anything that's just like all intensity, no, no peaks and valleys, just full on intensity all the time. That's, that's not easy. That's not physically easy to do. There are people who specialize in that. There are people who are just amazing. They're very resilient and they get a lot of work in video games. So kudos to them.
All right. So yeah. before before we uh, say goodbye, thank you for being here, Rachel. Seriously, oh, thank, you. thank you for having me, guys. Thank you for coming to the panel. It's it's an honor, and thank you all for being here too. I know it's a it's a Saturday, and um, I mean I, I really appreciate it, and it means a lot to me because um, I, t I told Samantha over there um, that I, gr I graduated law school last year, and then I realized I was officially an adult because I was like done with my education, and I was going through like a crisis a crisis because I was like I miss being a child. So the first thing I did was I watched Pokemon again oh. with my sister, and then I was um, lucky enough to join the Game On Expo team, and then I thought, you know what, I think we need a reunion, mm -hmm. and the, what, 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 I want, what I wanted to do is to make sure that they had a great time, um, and also I wanted you guys to have a great time, so it means a lot to me to see all of you here enjoying this, because... That's, that's my happiness right now. I, I really, it makes me so happy to see you here Aww. and taking part in this. So thank you so much. Oh. Right. Yeah, I had no idea that that was the process. Yeah, that was the process. It was, it was interesting <laughs> that how that happened. I actually returned to Pokemon, Pokemon um, after law school. So that that says a lot. Yeah. It's, it's probably that that region of the brain, it's the region right? Your brain it's started like started. But I just wanted to uh, let you know that uh, Rachel's signing uh, for the rest of the day. Yep. So please uh, stop by her table and say hi to her and get yeah. stuff autographed and take selfies and have fun. Yeah. Thank you so much, you guys. Thank you. Thank you for coming.